Good morning, everybody. We are alive today in my show that airs every Monday, Building Resilience. Welcome, everybody, to this show. Today is Monday, and we are uh, beginning to receive a, a guest. We are airing this show simultaneously. Remember, in the HOD Radio Network, it's a Christian channel that airs in Facebook that I recommend the people to go there. There are good stuff in that channel. You will see a lot of pastors, ministries, people like me. There are Christian guy that, that uh, talks here. And also we have here our audio room in LinkedIn. We are doing simultaneously in this moment. So welcome everybody that is beginning to join this show. Uh, please, in LinkedIn, I have the last two shows, some problem with the audio. Somebody give me thumbs up if they are hearing okay. I want somebody to give me, okay, okay, great, because the last two shows, LinkedIn has been doing a lot of glitches. Well, I see Charles and, and, and Sid uh, uh, raising the hands. Let me uh, tell how is the mechanics to the people that are new coming to this show. The way we do this show, this is a talk show that we are also inviting guests. And by the way, next week, you have to be prepared to, I'm going to have a guy that is a phenomenal guy. His name is Coach Raha. He's not so active in LinkedIn. He's more active in Facebook. But he's, he's a quite of a guy. He's a scientific. That at the same time, he's an opera singer. He's a black belt. And he's a master of yoga. So he's a phenomenal guy. That he will talk about his, his, um, his experience. So how we do this show every week? What we do every week is that we do our newsletter every weekend. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to my newsletter. The link is in the in the in the Facebook. Uh, I'm gonna put it also in and when this uh, uh, program finish, you can subscribe to my newsletter that is called Building Resilience. Every week I talk about leadership and resiliency. The people that doesn't know me, uh, 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 welcome here. My name is Jose Pereira, and and I'm I'm a I'm a former oil and gas executive that did a, a great career in the oil and gas. Thank you, ah, Alison, you're here. Thank you for being here. Uh, uh, let, let me get the introduction to my uh, co-host, Alison. Hello, Alison. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Great, great. I was explaining to the people that are new to the show how is the mechanic. So I was saying that I I did my career in oil and gas. I went to a hostage situation, and when I came back, I decided to be, become a leadership and president coach. So what I do is I do my newsletter. That is, by the way, in very soon I'm going to be hitting the three thousand subscribers. So I'm be, very pleased that that, that I have. A, a big community of 3,000 people that are following my newsletter. This newsletter, as I said, I talk about leadership and resilience. And what I do is that that, that topic that I, I post on the weekends is the same topic that we're going to be talking today. So what we do is that I, I introduce the, 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 the topic. I explain based on my experience about the topic. I give some cases studies about this topic. I give some recommendations, some authors that you can follow after. And then I give the opportunity to the people to raise the hands and open the mics. So we do like a half and half, half and half where we talk and half and half that I will open the mics to all my audience to become. Uh, the topic of today is a incredible topic is I titled it breaking the silence confronting the workplace abuse and toxic leadership this is a topic that I know that resonates with a lot of the people because I'm going to make you the question who doesn't have in, in, in his life experience a jerk as a boss or a toxic co-worker that has made his life un unlivable. So m many people has gone through this situation and, 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 and today th this is the opportunity that you can give your insight 
and maybe if you have the confidence, you can share your your what, what you went through. I have been receiving some DMs, some information that I told the people, come to the show and, and, and be vulnerable and, and tell your story. So let, let's begin without further ado. I'm going to say thanks to the people that have joined the, the show right now. I have Lisa Mary. I have Curtis. Hey, Curtis, my friend, we have a conversation very soon. Uh, Dewey, uh, we have Anna, we have Tim, very supportive, always Tim. Gabe, Gabe did, uh, he surprised me because they, they posted yesterday uh, a post with all the shows that he recommends during the week. And, and I had the honor that you included my friend. Thank you. Thank you for, for considering these programs, a uh, useful uh, program to, to the, to the audience. We have Tony. We have Vinny. We have Michael. We have Sid. We have Terrence, Erica, Fatma, and many people that will be coming. Ah, and Charles. And we had Charles from Costa Rica, uh, the Americano from Costa Rica. So, uh, we have also here in, in Facebook, uh, uh, we have, uh, Finn Parika, we have Daniel, we have Padma, and we have Michael. Okay. So the people begin to join, uh, and let's begin the, uh, the program. So breaking the silence, confronting and abusive leadership. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna read something that I found that at the California, uh, Management Institute, they, they posted recently something related to this topic. They, they, they said, breaking the silence is confronting the workplace abuse and also confronting an abusive leader. It highlights the significant importance of, a, of that toxic leadership in the workplace environment. That initiative focuses in, in the, the initiative that they're doing is to raise the awareness and addressing various forms of workplace abuse. So they consider workplace abuse, the, the bullying, the bullying, the psychological abuse, coercive control tactics that can lead to reduce employee morals, increase turnover and diminish well-being. Toxic leadership is defined by abusive supervising, where leaders exhibit behaviors such as attacking employees. It's amazing, leaders attacking employees. So they attack the self-esteem, they undermine their capabilities, and they create an environment of fear, fear and intimidation. It's very awful. So studies show that toxic leadership can trigger destructive behaviors among employees, including sabotage and withholding cooperation. This is something from the California Management Review. I, I'm going to put all this research in, in, my, uh, in, my, in my link when we finish this uh, show. So when we decided to talk about this is because uh, I was remembering, I'm, I'm, I'm going to mention here, because every week I try to go back to my memories situation that I, I had in my previous uh, former uh, uh, oil and gas life that I did several leadership positions. And you know, you, you in three decades, you see a lot of things. I remember, I remember a uh, um, long time ago, uh, I, I was the CEO in, in, in this company and they have a, a, a group of uh, managers and vice presidents, you know? And I remember we did a summit and we did it in, in Orlando and Florida. We, we decided to do it in Florida. So it, it was a sales summit. You know, the, this company uh, the, where I, I worked uh, had gas stations. So, and, and we had a strong marketed team. So uh, what we did every year, is we, we brought our marketers and the franchise, franchises because the, our gas station, most of them are franchises. So we brought our fr franchisees and then we gathered with them and did this summit. So we were having this uh, dinner with all the top executives. And I remember I was sitting in front of a lady, I'm not gonna mention her, of course, but she, uh, this lady was from our PR department. She was one of the top executives of the PR department. And I, I had beside me one of the top executives of, of my company. But but I saw that this guy was having too much drinks, you know, was having too much drinks, and um, and he was the boss of this lady, 
He was the boss of this lady. So when we sit down in the table, I begin to see a, a behavior that I didn't like it because the guy was kind of trying to abuse this lady in front of me, in front of me. And when I saw that, I, I, I was like in shock. And I was trying to see if that was something that was consensual or it was something imposed. And I, I began to see that because I, they were, the, the thing was happening. And when, when, when I saw the face of that lady, I had to turn to this guy and say, hey, my friend, what's going on? And well, I discovered that this guy was having a, a abusive relation with this lady, and, and, and he was kind of a, uh, uh, you know, trying to abuse his, uh, from his power. And this lady did, was not saying nothing. And I encouraged her to to say, no, no, this company is not is not not going to tolerate this type of circumstance. The long story short is that the the, the guy was sued. He was saying, as I need, we return him because that conduct was total unacceptable. Because this is something that, uh, unfortunately, is more normal that the, the people believe. So that's why I decided today to talk about that because I remember that, that event and it came to, me, to my mind, uh, uh, that event, and that's why I decided to, to bring to, to here. So I, I, I put it, I frame it the five main characteristics that doesn't mean that this is the only one there can be more okay but these are the most important characteristic uh, what is in a toxic and abusive boss maybe most of you there that are in the audience if you have had this experience with the abusive boss you will recognize these characteristics well one of the first characteristic of abusive boss is that micromanagement there is very common the micromanagement of one of the most abusive situation because it's those bosses that they don't accept that the, 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 the personnel can have their own uh, thought and they can do their own things. So they constantly are trying to control their employee. So they over control the employee and they don't allow no autonomy and don't allow no type of trust. Even they bully the, the, the employee. They use intimidation. Sometimes they use humiliations. And sometimes they use fear tactics to control or belittle the employees. This is one of the most terrible situations in an in abuse, uh, abusive boss. When he's bullying the employees, he's trying to control what they are doing. And, and it, it creates a terrible workplace environment. I don't know if, if some of you have gone through this situation, but it's terrible having a boss that is micromanaging you. So it's one of the most terrible situations in, 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 in as a characteristic of an abusive boss. <coughs> the second one is the bullying per se. The, 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 bull, the bullying is something that is, well, bullying is bullying. It, it comes even in, 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 from, from the school. But when a boss makes bullying to their employee, it's, horrible because it's really humiliating when, when a boss is trying to bully the, the, their employee. I don't know if you have gone through that situation, any of you. If you have a situation, you can later on raise your hand and tell your story. Blaming others, very typical. A, a, a boss that never recognizes his fault, always is blaming others. Always somebody else is has the fault. If something went wrong, your employee had the fault. If something went good, I had the merit. You know, that is, that is very typical. So this type of behavior is the boss that never takes responsibility. Never recognizes that he makes mistakes and always is blaming the employees or external factor. This is terrible because that, that creates a terrible workplace environment. And, and, and it undermines the, the trust of the employee, even their, their self-esteem. Because at some point, the employee can think, am I really doing things wrong? What is wrong with me? So this is very terrible when you have a situation like this. Emotional manipulation. This is something that happens in, in life, by the way, the emotional manipulation. When, when always you're using the guilt, the favoritism or unpredictable behavior to create confusion and insecurity. 
So that when, when a boss is always manipulating the employees, it's terrible. It's terrible because the, the, the employee can f feel confused and, and they can feel insecure because sometimes they can feel that they, they are them that they're, they're having this, this this problem, and sometimes it's that is is that the boss that, that is emotionally controlling and manipulating the employees. Unreasonable expectation. This is so common when you set some big unreasonable expectation, and that creates a very big sense of frustration. When an employee has a boss that over expect a, a, a something that, that everybody knows that will be unreasonable, it's a goal that will never be achieved, it creates a lot of frustration. It creates a lot of frustration because the, 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 and not only frustration, a stressful situation, because everybody is working to, to meet a deadline that will never get. You will never be there because it's unreasonable. So, so, and, and by the way, with now no little support. So, you know, he throws the, the, the expectation, no support, you're on your own. So this is very typical in these toxic and abusive uh, uh, bosses. So, the, so now comes the, the question. So if I'm going through this situation, what I have to do? How I deal with this? Before we make the answer, I'm gonna say thanks to the people that continue joining the room. We have here Maria, we have Tracy, we have Kevin. By the way, Kevin, yesterday we did a panel. We did a panel yesterday, uh, uh, Sunday in the morning, my morning. Uh, Kevin, uh, I believe Kevin is from Germany. There was a guy that I believe is from South Africa and the other guy was from the India and I'm from the U US. And we had uh, our great friend, Margaret, um, Martinez as moderator, and we did a g wonderful panel talking about the, you know, the eruption of AI, how this is changing the, 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 the way that leaders have to perceive the way they have to be the workplace in the future. What about the trending of the hi hybrid and remote work? So, the, the new trends, how a leader had to deal with that. So, it was a very wonderful share. And it was kind of funny for me because I was in, heading to my church during I was talking. So I was in the car with a mic and driving to the church. So, so yeah, but, but we had the opportunity to, to have this wonderful panel. So thank you, Kevin, for, for, for being in that panel. So we had Sain here. We have Adrian. We have Mohammed. We have my good friend, Lady Drew. We have Matthew, Matthew Kilkenny. Thank you, Matthew, for being here. I know that you're in, I believe it's in Dubai that you're here. Uh, yesterday he sent me a photo. He was in a pool. He, he, I was, uh, oh, wow. <laughs> I would love to be there. So uh, uh, we have uh, uh, Andre. We have Nisha. We have Mehmet. We have Kimberly. We have Jay. Thank you, Jay, for being here. We have Christine. We have Americo. Renjin, my good friend from the India, Renjin. We have Sol. We have Shahida. Fatma, Erika, Terence, Gabe. As I said, the people that came late, Gabe yesterday did a wonderful post putting uh, the shows of the week that should be uh, uh, here. And I had the honor that he put my show in, in the group. We have Tony, we have Vinny, we have Terence, Tim, Ina, Dewey, and Curtis. Curtis uh, is a friend, uh, a, a new friend. And by the way, we are kind of neighbors. We live very nearby. And we have Charles. And I have my, my good friend, Allison, also uh, as a co-host. Allison, you want to say something? Um, I just want to say that um, I enjoyed the topic. So hi, Jose. Hello to everyone. I do enjoy the, the topic. I'm looking forward to really hearing uh, more, you know, <clears throat> of what is to be presented, Jose. And I think, uh, you know, it's always a pleasure to be able to hear from your area of expertise. A lot of persons who are listening here, I think they, you know, they have faced workplace abuse at some point and, and toxic leadership. And it's good for us all to be able to learn from this information to identify, especially if you are facing any type of toxic leadership or, you know, if you're facing workplace abuse, how to handle it. So, Jose, it's always a pleasure 
to really hear from you and i look forward to hearing from, from persons who will share as well okay thank you because now we're going to talk what if you're going through this situation what you have to do and i'm going i'm going to give some recommendations uh, action that you have to take but uh, the way I I will recommend is you are here in the U.S. some institution that you can go. I don't I'm not familiar with other countries, but but I will encourage the people if they're hearing us from other countries like UK or New Nigeria or South Africa, Australia, people from Costa Rica, other countries. If they if they, they go to their web page and Google all these institutions that that because this is a worldwide program today. The, the abusive leadership is something that is not not only here in the U.S. It's worldwide. It's worldwide. It's happening in all over the world. And and the good news is that today is something that is very well recognized as as a problem. It's a big problem. And today there are institutions and non-profit organizations that support people that are going through this. Because one of the main things that when you're going through an abu abusive relationship with a toxic boss, that is it undermine your self-esteem and definitely affect your mental health. And, and you create self-sabotage. And if you have some tendency to be uh, suffer anxiety or depression, you can even commit suicide. It's unfortunately cases of people that they don't know how to deal with a situation they're having in the workplace, and they commit suicide. It's incredible. So I always tell the people that any thing that you're going in your life, please don't do it alone. Always seek for help. Open your mouth, shout out, scream, ask for help, but never do things alone. This is my strong recommendation. So, so we're going to be talking now. If you're going to this abusive, uh, uh, relation, what, what, what can you do? I'm going to mention five topics. Again, there are much more. I always talk about the main five topics because for compression of time, of course, I try to focus in the, the most important. <clears throat> the first thing that somebody that is going through an abusive relation in their workplace, it can be a boss, but it can be a co-worker too. It can be a co-worker too. Not necessarily has to be a boss, it can be a co-worker. Document everything. The first thing you have to do is document everything. When you when you discover or, or you realize that you're going through this abusive relation, begin to document everything. When it happened, have the date, have the time, and if you can have even witnesses. Try to create your case. This is the first thing you have to do. You, you never know if this is going to stop or this is going to continue. But if you at some point see that it is continuing, document. I remember the case I mentioned about my coworker that was my PR lady that was having this problem with this manager. I discovered because we, we opened an, invest, an investigation and we begin interview and we discovered that that was happening from long time. But this lady was silent. She did, she was not talking. She be, she was kind of having fear because this is one of the problems. The people who have the fear, maybe they need their job. They they have the fear to get fired, you know, and 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 lose their job. So so this lady was having that fear. So she she was being silent until I, I discovered that 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 thing and and I I we opened the the, the investigation. The guy not only was returned, he was sued. She, she filed a lawsuit against him. And the case continued. It, it became to be a very awful situation. So one of the things that lady had, she already had documenting everything. When we interviewed her, she had already a big documentation about the, the, the situation, what, what, what was going. And you know what we discovered when we begin to investigate the guy? He had a pattern because he, he was assigned from our parent company. He came from, uh, our parent company was a Venezuelan oil and gas. He came from the Venezuelan oil and gas, and he did a long career in the oil and gas like, like, like I did. But when we went back to investigate him in the, uh, in the Venezuelan oil and gas, we discovered that he had done this same thing that she, he was doing to this lady, to another lady in other workplace. Because that, that normally the people that have this type of behavior, is, is, they do it repeatedly. 
That, that is not the first time they do it. They, they, even if they move from jobs, they do it uh, all over. So that's why it's important that this deep type of uh, behavior has to be cut, cut and stop. So, so document everything. The second thing you have to do is seek for support. As I said, never do things alone because maybe that situation is giving you a very stressful situation. Maybe you are having anxiety. Maybe you are depressed. And if you don't talk with nobody because you're having fear, it will affect you. It will affect your well-being, your mental health, and the, and will be begin to affect your physical health too. And as I said, people can go to the extreme situation that commit suicide. So so you need to seek the support. So the first thing is try to talk with somebody that you feel comfortable and go to HR. I'm going to mention that today there are tools like whistleblowing tools where the people can anonymously denounce these type of situations. So seek for support. The third thing that the that, that person had to do is set boundaries. You have to have your frame. You have to firmly establish you, where are, comes your personal and your professional limit to reduce the impact of a toxic behavior. I'm going to say something here because uh, th there is something that uh, can be confused. A toxic relation or behavior or, or of a cultural behavior. Why I'm going to mention this because there are several type of culture where it's more common where the people can touch if each other. For example, the French culture, everybody knows that the French l l love to kiss themselves. Okay? Italian, they do the two kisses in the cheek. And uh, for example, we, the Venezuelan, I'm a Venezuelan born, we are very friendly. We try to uh, hug, we hug the people. So uh, it's very typical that you, when you, uh, you know, you, you appreciate somebody, you hug them. We, we are big huggers. <laughs> so for me, when I came here to the U.S. Uh, some years ago, I remember the first thing that I hit, I had to, to change was that behavior of hugging. Because here in the U.S. it's not typical that you hug with, uh, with uh, colleagues. And then, so for me at the, at the beginning, I'm, I'm going to confess the first years for was kind of difficult because I really love to hug somebody when I, I appreciate somebody. I was a big hugger, you know, so I, I, I had to recognize there was a cultural difference, but, but that has not to be confused because if you hug somebody because you appreciate it, because this is your culture, you have to recognize the cultural difference. That doesn't mean that you have to accept it because that's why you have to set boundaries. So now, now that you are in a culture that is different than yours, in that culture that there is not how you as leader have to recognize that cultural difference. So why you're going to try to impo impose a hugging is that people don't like to hug. But for me, it was funny because I found, because uh, uh, when I began to work here in the U.S. in the company, the, the parent company was a Venezuelan oil and gas company, long term, uh, uh, since the 80s, more than 40 years relation between Venezuelan and Americans here in the U.S., the Americans that worked with the company that had long-term work, and they knew that we were huggers, so they began to hug too. So for me, sometimes when I met somebody in the company new, I didn't know if they wanted to be hugged or not, so they came to hug me because they knew that we, the Venezuelan, love to have that. It was funny because it was a cultural difference, but it was something really very transparent, very open, where there was no hiding intention, it was a cultural situation. So you have to be had the difference between when you have a cultural uh, behavior, like the cases of the French that they kiss, or the Italian that they give the two kisses in the cheek, very common to them. So I, I don't know if a, a, a French guy, when he's in uh, abroad in a culture that doesn't do that, he has to accept that he cannot be kissing people. Or the Italian, if he gives the two cheek uh, kisses, he has to recognize that he's in another culture that doesn't do that. He has not to do it. So you have to adapt to the culture of, of, of the country where you are. Knowing your rights, very important. The person that is going through any bully situation has to know his right. 
Depending on the country that you are, the right can be, uh, uh, the, the right, no, the law can be more severe or no, but the rights are universal. The, the rights are always universal. You have to know your right. And then, and the last situation is consider a, exit a strategy. Because if the situation remains, you maybe have to change of uh, workplace. Consider changing workplace. People sometimes have fear losing their job. I understand that because you have compromises, but you cannot accept that. So you have to be aware that maybe the most important thing, the decision that you have to take is exit, go to another workplace. You don't belong there. So consider exit a strategy. So said this, I'm, I'm going I'm to uh, uh, conclude to open the mics. I know that Charles has a raised hand. If anybody wants to uh, talk, I'm going to begin in a few minutes to give to the mics to open the, to raise the hand. I'm going to continue saying that uh, uh, I have more people coming. I have Jackie. Jackie is doing a very wonderful trip to Alaska. That I'm jealous. I would like to go to Alaska. <laughs> We have Lisa here, wonderful people too. Samira, Alan, uh, uh, Kiston, the, 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 the Black Hawk. Thank you, my friend. Erica, Sayend, Dr. Brittany, Marina. And we have here from, from Facebook, we have Miriam, we have Finn, Paricha, we have Daniel, and we have Fatma and, and the pastor. Okay, well, thank you, thank you for being here. And okay, so now that we did these two things, how you recognize a, a bu abusive leader, what you can do when you are being abused. <clears throat> I'm gonna mention here a very famous case study. I always talk about cases of study uh, about uh, um, the topic. In today, the case study we're doing is related to the uh, toxic leadership. There is a very famous scandal that is the Uber scandal. I don't know if you, re uh, you remember some years ago, Uber, you know, the driver uh, uh, app had a very big uh, uh, scandal because Uber used to have a, a CEO, he's no longer in the company, called Travis Kalanick. This guy was a massive abuser. He, he always was harassing the employees and he had a very toxic leadership behavior. So Uber faced a massive upheaval after employees came forward with allegation of harassment and toxic leadership against this guy. They filed a big lawsuit. So he created a culture of fear and bullying and he combined this because there was a lack of HR supervision. And th this is something I'm gonna say here. One of the big things that the HR has to do, I don't know if somebody in the States if come from the HR, but one of the things that HR has to immediately stop this, has to be created the culture in the company that this type of behavior is unacceptable. Is unacceptable because this is something that will give a, 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 a public relation nightmare. And it's unacceptable. It's not because it's, a, it's bad uh, public relation, it's because it's something that goes against the human rights. So, so that what created that case in Uber, it created a mass resignation and there was a complete leadership of overhaul. So at the end, the stakeholder decided to do a complete uh, uh, overhaul. And if you go today to the uh, 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 Uber app, you will see a lot of uh, um, procedures where they they did a uh, strong shift where some behavior are unacceptable, for example, even for the driver, with a with a the, with a person that is is in the car, there are some um, boundaries uh, between the driver and the and the and the person that is uh, using the app. There is boundaries between the 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 driver and the and the other people that are Uber employees. There are a lot of boundaries between Uber because they came that came after the, that big scandal. So the company had to took a strong drastic step removing all that toxic environment 
and include the new leadership and, and as, as I said, they created a new HR protocols. So this, that was a big scandal that, that made Uber to lose a lot of money, a lot of money. So if you are going to any abusive relations, I, I'm going to mention here, here, this is in the U.S. I don't know how it's in other country, but there is a, a several institutions that I'm going to mention here that they treat this type of situation. There's the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, the EEOC. This is a commission that, that, that takes care of this situation. If you're going to any abuse situation, go to eeoc.gov and, and, and they have a, pay, a, a page that they can you can put your anonymous um, case there. <clears throat> There's the National Workplace Bullying Coalition, the NWBC. This is an organization that advocates to raise awareness on the bullying. They have a webpage called the WorkplaceBullyingCoalition.org. That, 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 uh, 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 that org uh, uh, is uh, in charge of this. Yeah, we have three people raising their hand. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna wait uh, to conclude here. To 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 uh, let me put them in a stage, and and I'm gonna open the mics in few minutes. I'm gonna give you the opportunity when I finish here. And yeah, okay. The three of my friends are 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 in the stage. Give me a few seconds to conclude here. So. We have the Workplace Bullying Institute. We have the Occupational Safety and Healthy Administration, the OSHA. And we have the American Psychology Association, the, the National Institute of Occupations of Safety and Health, the NIOSH, and the Center of Workplace Excellence of the University of Illinois. These are all institutes I'm going to put there in the, in, in the links when I conclude this this event, if somebody is going through this situation, how they can treat this. And to finalize and to open the, the mics, if you want to know more about this case, there is a very prominent uh, 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 author called, uh, uh, is the Dr. Gary Nami. He has uh, 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 several books. He's a, uh, uh, a social psychologist and he's a co-founder of an institute called the Workplace Building. You can go to his book where he talks about these, these things. And as a conclusion, I, I will say that toxic bosses always exist, unfortunately. And abusive work environment detriment the mental health of the employee, detriment the career growth, and, and overall the well-being of, of, of the employees. So this is something that is totally unacceptable. So it's essential that you recognize if you're being abused, and you have to take action, as I said, put your boundaries and, and, and ask for help and seek for a healthy environment. And if you feel that that place is not your place, take an exit strategy. Look another place to work. So as leader, our responsibility to foster that world, the workplace is a, a place where the employee feels respected. They are empowered and they are heard. So this is something that if, if we as leader, this is uh, happening in our organization, we have to stop it. I always mention the case I said, when I discovered the case that was going in my organization, I stopped it immediately because this is something that you cannot accept. And, and, and well, that, that is, I'm going to conclude here. I'm going to open the mics and I'm going to give the mic to my friend Charles. So open the mics are your Charles. Thank you. I uh, uh, love this uh, discussion and uh, during the discussion decided to write down my points so I get to them and then we can move on. Uh, number one, uh, it starts, in my opinion, it starts with Christians like your, you and, and me where uh, we need to take our religion seriously and love our neighbor and uh, uh, as much as possible get along with everyone then uh, you mentioned culture where I'm at now culturally as I understand it at least at times I'm supposed to kiss ladies one kiss per cheek only uh, I have not adopted that at least not as of yet 
as being from the U.S., that would be considered rape culture in the U.S. And so trying to be culturally sensitive and figure out how I'm ever going to adapt it to that aspect of the culture or not. Uh, then finally, uh, rules are good, but as we saw in, for example, Enron, the famous energy company from Texas, all the rule, they had, quote unquote, the best rule book for employee hand, employee conduct, but management Have we lost you? Even after the company paid to have your misdeeds taken care of, then you can do management done and then have the board be able to say, okay, our managers, explain yourselves. And if they don't explain themselves well enough, have the board say, okay, we don't care that you're the CEO, CFO, uh, whatever, you're fired. Yeah, that, that's, that's totally true. And by the way, Charles, I was laughing when you were talking about the, the kissing in the cheek because I know you're in Costa Rica and it's a Latin American culture. All across Latin America, it's very common that, that people uh, hug and give kisses in the cheek. It's very common, very common. And, 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 and there's nothing wrong. That nothing wrong, but, but for a, a person that doesn't have that culture, for example, Americans, if you try to give a kiss, to a lady, it's the first time you see it. <laughs> it can be something really bad for you. But we, the Venezuela, do it very frequently. For me, I have had to dominate that because this is something that's kind of embedded in your culture. So I understand you clearly that why for you is difficult because this is the, the thing with the cultural difference. Thank you for the chair. So uh, we have here Jay and Andre. I don't know who was first, Jay or Andre. Uh, I'll yield the mic to Andre. Okay, Andre, go ahead. Thank you, Jay. I appreciate it. Um, this is a really good conversation, actually, because I've been on, I would say, the receiving end of this a couple of times. And, and I'm really glad, Jose, that you mentioned a few of the tactical things that people can do when they're in the situation because I think people who are experiencing workplace abuse and toxic leadership don't necessarily it, it, it's an emotional issue which can sometimes override the logic when you're feeling overwhelmed when you're feeling pressured when you're feeling targeted it can be difficult to stop and be ask yourself the question oh what can I actually do about it um, and you can something as simple as just forgetting that there is a workplace um, procedure for harassment in place. You might forget the idea that you might be able to call HR. You might forget the idea that you have people who are in your team that might be able to listen to you and support you through whatever it is. But one thing I would say as a caveat that I learned um, the hard way, I would say, is that HR's allegiance is with the company not with you so i found that it really important to follow the systems follow the um t take down all the notes like you said that one was really important make sure you make your own case so that you can bring it up to um the the attention of the people above you if you want to take action but i find having your own independent advice being really important having someone whether it's going to a charity or finding a friend of the family or something who is in the legal world who can advise you on what you can and can't do is really important to do when you're in a in a space when you're experiencing this and these kind of things may not last forever but when you're in them it's important to at least know what you can do about it so when it gets to that point you have everything in place you don't want to find yourself being brought into a room and then have to start thinking oh what did that person say on the 6th of september and then what did that person do in april i can't remember which order it came in etc if you have somewhere on your phone on your emails where you can say okay this is exactly what happened then um i find that helps but it's mainly for me one thing i, I just wanted to get across is that a lot of this is can be very emotional and so um it's 
kind of like looking at the regulation and looking at um, your emotional regulation as well, being able to say, okay, this is happening right now, but I am, am I in physical harm, for example, first, because that, that is a real thing in the workplace even. I always say that the workplace is just a really big playground for big people. So a lot of the things that you see in a kindergarten playground can sometimes happen in the workplace as well. Um, and not to be naive about that not happening, you're not actually protected, the people are still people. Um, but then being able to regulate yourself and figure out what do I need to do right now, what can what is in my favour, um, is just a really important one to bear in mind. Thank you. Uh, you know something, Andrew, it's very, uh, you said something very important that the HR is with the company, it's not with you. That, that sometimes, unfortunately, that is true. But you know what is important that, that the leader of the company had to be the, uh, on top of this type of behavior. It's totally unacceptable for a leader tolerating this type of behavior. There had to be zero tolerance on this because once you, leave a little tolerance because th there is a kind of a moral debate if if the person that is doing the harassment is somebody maybe maybe one of your best uh, managers you know is a great achiever and is very successful and you and you and you are friends and whatever but now you find that he's a, a bullying and he's an abuser of the employee. So you don't have to tolerate that. So that when the leader is very clear in that, in that, and it doesn't allow this, is when the HR has to, it's not because HR is gonna support the company, it's because it's a cultural situation that you will not tolerate this type of behavior. So this is very important what you mentioned. And thank you, Andre. Jay. Uh, thank you, Jose. Uh, a lot of good points this morning. Um, what I wanted to discuss, well, a couple of things. Uh, you mentioned culture and some of the differences, you know, across the globe. Uh, I'll point to one that I'm familiar with because I'm a Pacific Islander, um, where in New Zealand, they perform the haka. And the haka is a very aggressive war chant, but it's performed in a lot of, you know, um, openings and events and things like that and for visiting corporate executives <laughs> they can be taken aback unless they're not made aware of that cultural um event usually and because it is very aggressive and so when some of these executives are not prompted properly before they they arrive they are stunned sometimes and but that's usually far and few between. And some people already know what that is. Um, but if you've never experienced before, it can be a little jarring, right? But it's it's important in a lot of events in New Zealand um, to perform this, this cultural dance and this cultural event um, and chant. So I just wanted to kind of talk about it. The other thing in, in Maori culture is the hongi where they press noses together and inhale each other's essence. <laughs> That's a different sort of greeting. And if you're not familiar with that it, and you don't know it and you're, you're not prompted to do it, it can be also a really different experience for folks. Um, so just talking about culture and some of the things that you need to be aware of depending on where you are, that's one of the places that came to mind um, as far as cultural differences and how to interact. Um, but I, I want to go, I'm going to talk now about um, culture in general of a company. And I think one of the things that companies are not seen doing as often as it used to be done in the past is having an employee handbook, just something so simple as an employee handbook for everyone, not just employees, but for the C-suite, the executives, right? So that there can be expectations placed somewhere so that there's a database of it so that people are aware of what 
is expected of them, both from the leadership perspective and from the team in production, right? The employees, the line employees, the line staff, right? And so I think that right there needs to be kind of brought back into the corporate culture or the company culture across the globe even so that expectations are there for people to understand and so that they can follow these expectations and and if if those expectations aren't met then you can also then discuss what are the ramifications of that but if there aren't any expectations set in stone somewhere or at least in a database somewhere people are not going to understand what will be the ramifications of their actions or inactions and i think when you do have something that people can refer to there will be this opportunity for people to improve get better be more effective be more efficient and i think that um that those are the main topics i wanted to discuss and bring to the table thanks jose thank you jay for bringing these two topics and let me say something regarding these two topics the two the first one is the cultural difference that i, I know that was not part of the topic of today but it, it even can be a complete separate topic by the way my, my good friend dr um ashad i believe he's going to have this week in a, 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 a room this sunday i believe Maybe you have to check it where he's going to talk about cultural difference in the workplace. And this is something really important, really important. I, I, I can tell you all, all the audience in my particular experience, because I work in, with several cultures in all my life. I, I have the opportunity. I always talk about this. I'm working one day with Italians and three years after with a Japanese for me was a blow my mind, the difference in the culture and then working with a Chinese blow my mind. So you have to adapt to, to those culture and recognize the difference. And if you are the leader and you're going to work in their country, is you who has to adapt to their culture because who is it going to their country is you. You you cannot expect that the country adapt to yourself. This is one of the big mistakes that leader does that. He believes that because I'm a leader of a big company, I'm coming here, I'm the boss. Now the people have to do what I want. No, my friend, you have to adapt to the culture of that country. This is something that's very key. The second thing that, that uh, Jay, Jay was talking is about the employee uh, company book. And that's totally true. Totally true. I, I, when you were talking, Jay, you were reminding me that when I began my career in the 80s in, in Pedrezza, the first thing they did, they gave to me was a company, the employee book had everything that, that you had to take care of uh, 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 as a behavior. And we trained the employee. By the way, I did training. I was one of the guys that did training to, to the employees, uh, how, how to adapt to the uh, culture of the company. And it's amazing how you see today, today, big companies go into big lawsuit because they, they are not on, on compliance and things that sometimes go against the ethics. And they do it and, and you say, seriously, this company are going to this lawsuit because they don't set clear culture. They don't see uh, set clear boundaries where you can go as far or, or not. And that happened also in the, in the relationship with the employee. A boss has to have clear how has to be the relation with the employee. So thank you for, for bringing that topic, uh, Jay, very important. Erika. The mics are yours. Thank you, Jose, for your invite today. Hello, everyone on stage and in the listening lounge. And happy Monday. I hope everyone has a great week. So my share on toxicity and leadership is that toxicity is stubborn and subtle like oil and water. So think about that, where the oil is the toxicity and the water is the leader or the leadership. So we all have, you know, problems in life and we know that those problems or let's say toxicity is, you know, insoluble or it sits on the top of our minds or on the top of our to do list. And, you know, that can create this, you know, toxicity in leadership. But we find that usually in business, you know, organizations, partnerships, things like that, 
toxicity is usually hidden by the emulsion of things like burnout or cold switching. And I say burnout or cold switching. Hi, Andre, again. I loved your share today. Um, but I specifically say burnout or cold switching is because I think that became my emulsifier in, you know, my journey in leadership is that, you know, that burnout or cold switching could be to adhere, you know, to company culture and it creates the tone of intimidation where some mentioned you don't know if you should, ex you know, have an exit strategy or if you should adapt and adhere. So I just wanted to, you know, give people the, the view of toxicity as, you know, oil and water where it could be just you know, a bad mix, you know, it could be improper mixing, it can be improper ingredients, and overall, that sits on the foundation of the type of leadership or the culture of the company. So thank you for allowing me to share today. Thank you for your share, Erica, very wonderful. Uh, and John? Hello, Mr. Jose, yeah, everybody, Erica. I admire you, uh, seeing you after a long time, and the audience. Uh, I'm reminded, uh, Mr. Jose, of what BBC very many years back showed in uh, the UK, the royal family, if you are invited or you are knighted, you have to kiss the, the, the forearm of the queen or whoever is knighting you. They will say, a uh, gentleman from South America and in his nervousness, instead of kissing her hand, he turned the hand and kissed his own forearm. That is something which amused me. That gentleman, and John, that gentleman was the President Chavez of my country, <laughs> who, did, who tried to do that. <laughs> I didn't know that. The world's a small place. I was scratching my head to find out we had no Google then. No, that was that was a very famous case that he was when Chavez was alive. He was invited the, to a, a big event in the, with a crown. And in the middle of a, this is a very good representation. He was a president of a country. Nobody never told him that he could not do that. And he tried to do it. And the, and the queen was kind of surprised when the, so it, it, it went all over. Well, that was President Chavez who tried to do that. Uh, Show that you're human, no matter what ranks you have, you're human first. In some African countries, you rub noses for greetings. God forbid if you have a running nose. Then hug is something very common in the Western world. But if you hug, uh, you, it's prohibited in uh, most of the Asian countries. Uh, getting to these things, getting to these things, I think sanit being sanitized about what... Uh, can be done and cannot be done before you enter a country, I think is uh, very valuable. In uh, the army, for example, uh, they, are, they are taught how to eat with fork and knife. The commanding officer has the privilege of the junior most officer, if you get married, to uh, dance with his bride. And lastly, it's so interesting that most of these multinationals, the higher ups, Many of them are not aware of the bank TV, the you know, eating with fork and knife and things like that, uh, chopsticks. Since I teach these skills, it really added a bit of uh, interest in the work that I'm doing. Fascinating, fascinating mm -hmm. workplace abuse and toxic leaders. We know it more or less, we know it all. Thank you, Jose, for your very kind time. Over to you, sir. Okay, we're almost finishing. Uh, so we have few minutes uh, safer to to give your final word because uh, with this we had to close uh, the event and the mics are yours yes it's Jose Angel Pereira good evening everybody I'm delighted to be here with you all so it's a very lengthy topic I, I have gone through the pros and cons of all the discussions that has been uh, uh, upheld here by the distinguished uh, uh, participants. I welcome all of you and appreciate your uh, deep insights on the uh, workplace abuse and toxic environment that can uh, mentally 
emotionally and psychologically affect employees work at workplaces in many ways so uh, overall it was a very uh, healthy very healthy uh, conversation i appreciate all the participants for their participating in this event and uh, because it offers a very uh, fruitful discussion for the future strategies to be followed in confronting these areas everybody has in one or the other way been abused at workplace so i think uh, we need to come up come forward come up with our uh, 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 i mean hidden uh, secrets ideas or the suggestions we have so that we can somehow create a very conducive environment for a healthy dialogue healthy discussion at the workplace so that uh, office management and a work business concern uh, grows in a fruitful manner thank you jose and superior thank you everybody well with this we're going to conclude now because we're getting to the end of the show thank you for the people that join us remember i do this every monday subscribe to my newsletter where i'm going to be talking every every week a, a different topic next week i'm going to have a very special guest this guy is amazing he's a scientific he's a black belt he's an opera singer he's a yoga a, 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 a worker he he has the four techniques so you, you you will want to hear this guy and subscribe to the newsletter Con, eh, eh, assist every Monday to this show and and support me with this with this initiative. And if you want to know more, you can DM me and we can have a direct conversation. I'm a leadership resilient coach. I, I this is part of the thing that I that I I, I, I uh, coach. So anybody that has having something that resonate with them that doesn't know how to deal it, they can DM me. Thank you. I, I'm going to conclude here. Alison, I don't know if you want to say something else. Um, no, I don't want to say anything at this time, but just want to say uh, thanks again for the opportunity and for those who have shared that there is so much that I have learned. So many tips and expertise, uh, a wealth of experience from everyone here. And it's, a, it's just a pleasure. I want to give others who have or unstated the opportunity since I'm always here with you. Okay, said this, and then we're going to conclude this uh, event. People that are hearing me uh, in Facebook, thank you also. This program I'm going to leave recorded. In a few minutes, it's going to be recorded, and then I'm going to share to Facebook and to LinkedIn. If somebody that want to hear it again, or if want to share with other people that couldn't not attend the event, thank you, everybody. And with this, we're going to conclude now at the count of five, four, Three, two, one. Thank you, everybody, to be.